There is a boldness and a confidence that the apostles had in Christ Jesus. But moreover, there is a boldness and a confidence that they had in their relationship with Christ Jesus. There's a level of confidence that they had, beloved, that they knew that when they prayed to God, he would hear them and he would answer them. And if the answer was as they expected or desired, well, glory be to God. But if the answer was not as they expected and desired, it did not phase, it did not break their hold, their faith and their trust in God. There must be a depth of connection that the apostles would have had with Christ Jesus that even though they knew that they were going to die for the faith in Christ that they professed that they still would have continued on on that path that led to certain death that they knew that they would have been burned, that they knew that they would have been crucified, that they knew that they would have been beheaded. Whatever the fate, whatever the outcome, they were satisfied with it and their faith in God was unmoved, unfazed, unshaken and unbroken. They had a confidence and they had a confidence in Christ because they knew him. They knew God. And this is expressed when in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 12, Paul says, For the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. So Paul is saying he knows God. He knows whom he is believing in. His relationship in Christ, with Christ, is not based on assumption. It is based on knowledge. He had an experiential knowledge in Christ Jesus. He did not have a theoretical knowledge of God. He knew God. He knew whom he was believing in. He knew whom he was trusting in. And he knew that whatever God did, whatever God does, is always going to be well done. So his faith in God is unmoved, it is unfazed, and it is unshaken. And this is where God wants us to be in our personal relationships with him. He wants us to know him. Because when you know a person and you hear a rumor about that person because you've had an experience with that person, a thorough inside and out knowledge of that person, you can immediately dismiss and identify what is a rumor because you understand the principles by which that person lives and the habits of that person, the mannerisms of that person and you know the limitations of that person, what they would do, what they could do and what they will never do because you know them. Just like how we know that rocks are hard, that water is wet, that heat, that fire is hot. We know this. This is an established fact. This is an inescapable reality that fire will burn you, that the sea has no back door, that volcanoes, they do erupt those that are active and magma is hot. So this is an inescapable fact. You need your relationship, beloved, with God to be established on a fact. And when it is established on a fact, it will give your connection with him greater strength and you would have greater 
confidence. And that fact must always be that God is love and you have tested this love in your life and therefore you know. So someone can come and they can say that God is a tyrant. They can say that God is a liar. They can say whatever lies or slander or cast whatever epithet against the name of God but you know for yourself. So the question beloved is do you know whom you are believing in or are there questions left unanswered in your mind, in your soul regarding the love, the justice or the mercy of God? Are you clear in your relationship with God or are there some hidden issues or are there some skeptical thoughts that you have uh, 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 against God? Are there any elements of distrust in your relationship with God? And if it may be so, don't be ashamed. Go to God and address them. And ask God to answer you because we must remember this one thing that God is interested in saving our souls. But these questions in your soul, in your mind, these, these, these thoughts of doubt to the love of God, to the, the, the justice and the mercy of God, they must be addressed in your experience. Because if they are not addressed in your experience, they will come again and to to haunt you and to destroy your faith in God because you did not take the time to know God. And when the unexplained and the unexpected happens, your faith in God is shaken because you did not cast a firm foundation in your relationship with him to build your faith upon. Can you say like Paul today, beloved, that you know God? So we have to know that we know God and we have to know that God knows us. And the aspect of God knowing us is another conversation entirely. This is the Word of Life with Andre Knight.